welcome to the GS1 Ireland Healthcare webinar series. This is a series of short flash talks where we'll try and uh, the objective is to I suppose, demystify some of the GS1 acronyms and um, answer questions that you may have and I suppose also maybe cover some things that we see coming up again and again and hopefully this is an educational series. Um, thank you for joining us all and uh, this is our first time to do a webinar uh, where both presenters are, are not sitting in the same room so um, hopefully it, it, it works. The dry one run went very well yesterday. Um, and so today, I suppose the topic is uh, what is a GTIN? So, and the um, questions, if you have any issues uh, hearing us or um, have any questions, you can type them in and uh, one of us will pick them up. The agenda for today's call is what is a GTIN? So, we'll first of all cover exactly what that is. What are the barcodes used in healthcare and why use a GTIN? And these are questions that come up regularly, so hopefully we can and try and answer some of your questions today. So I'll hand over now to my colleague Amanda. And sorry, I've just realised I didn't do the introductions in terms of who, who you're listening to. So my name is Siobhan Duggan and I'm the Director of Innovation and Healthcare at GS1 Ireland. And my colleague Amanda is the Project Management Executive for Healthcare. And I'll hand you over to Amanda now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Siobhan. So, um, a GTIN stands for Global Trade Item Number, and it is used for the unique identification of healthcare products worldwide. And the GTIN is encoded in barcodes so that they can be machine readable by scanners. Uh, so, a bit of trivia for you all the first item scanned for sale by its barcode was over 45 years ago for a multi pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum. And its use has evolved, and GTINs are now used across all industries as the de facto standard for product identification. So, you may be used to seeing and scanning barcodes through your work already, and you may know or you may not know, and may have thought what this number, the GTIN, on a barcode actually means. So, you can see here in the left of the purple box a linear barcode with 13 digits. And this is an example of a GTIN encoded in an EAN 13 barcode. And then if you also note to the right of the box, this is the same GTIN, but it's encoded into a GS1 data matrix. And this is becoming the more common type of barcode which is used in healthcare. And I'll speak more about this later on, but just to note here that the GTIN can be represented in either form or in various different data carriers or barcodes, but its meaning is the same. And then next on the slide, we have a breakdown of the GTIN. So highlighted in the green is what is called the global company prefix. So this number is allocated by a GS1 organization somewhere in the world to a manufacturer or product owner who wishes to identify their product using a GS1 barcode. So it can be up to nine digits long depending on the bank of numbers available to that company through their GS1 license. And um, then next is in the light blue portion of the GTIN, which and this is allocated by the company. So, a GTIN must be unique to one product and at a single packaging level. And for this example, there is a bank of 100,000 numbers which can be allocated. Then, in the dark blue portion is what we call the check digit. So, this number is calculated through an algorithm and it uses all the numbers in the barcode in this algorithm to ensure that the barcode or the GTIN is composed correctly. So if you are creating GTINs using your GS1 license, there is an online tool available to calculate the check digit on the GS1 website. And then finally, before we move on to the next slide, just to note that the GTIN is the primary device identifier for the majority of healthcare products. So next, I would like to briefly talk about where does the GTIN come from. So here we have a very simplistic view of a healthcare supply chain. 
So a distributor or a supplier will take several products from several manufacturers and then supply these products to several healthcare providers who will use those products at point of care. And just to note that it's generally the manufacturer who assigns the GTINs to each packaging level per product and then encodes this information in the barcode. Um, for the purposes of capturing inform product information, distributors and healthcare providers can then scan and capture this information to track products through the supply chain right down to the patient bedside. So being standardized and globally unique, the GTIN presents a big opportunity for all players in the healthcare supply chain. And Siobhan will go into more detail on this later in the presentation. So then next, I would like to briefly speak about the different types of barcodes we see in healthcare. So um, as mentioned, GTINs are encoded into barcodes to make them machine readable. And on the top row here in this slide, we have three different types of standard GS1 barcodes, which have the same GTIN encoded. And first is the EAN13, and this is most commonly seen in retail and point of sale, um, or on point of sale items, but it still may be seen across the healthcare supply chain, but it is largely being replaced by the GS1128 and the um, GS1 data matrix, which we see next. So um, again, next we have the GS1128 barcode. So again, this is commonly seen on some healthcare items. And as you will see, the GTIN does look slightly different than it does in the EAN13. So I will just shortly or quickly explain to you why that is. So first, it starts with a 01 in brackets. So this is what we call an application identifier. Um, so basically the 01 lets the scanning system know that it is a GTIN and this is because there may be additional information encoded in the barcode. Um, then next, the other difference that we have is that there is a zero after this 01 um, at the start of the GTIN, which is not present in the EAN13. So um, this is because in this type of barcode, the GTIN must be 14 digits long. So in the case where it is shorter, leading zeros are added, and these simply act as filler characters um, and do not change the GTIN concern. So um, just it's important to note here, if you are scanning um, barcodes into Excel file, um, you must be careful as to what format the cell is set to um, to ensure that the information is captured because we have seen some issues, or that it is a common issue. And then next to the right of the GS1128, we have the GS1 data matrix. So this type, this is the most common type of barcode seen in healthcare. It's um, becoming the preferred barcode type as it can encode large amounts of data and is being commonly requested as a part of regulatory requirements for serialization and traceability. Um, so you can see on the next row, we have the two other examples of a GS1128 and data matrix. So this has the GTIN and additional information encoded in the barcodes. So just to note that in the 128, the lot and batch number is included, whereas if you look at the data matrix in much less space, there is the batch expiry and serial number encoded into the data matrix. So um, as mentioned, this is where healthcare is rapidly moving to and it allows much more traceability in just one beep. So then finally, or lastly, before I hand back to Siobhan, I would like to briefly touch on what the regulators are saying. Um, so at a high level and globally, regulators are seeking standardization and harmonization of product identification in healthcare. And the aim of this is to, of course, increase patient safety and also allow more efficient ability for the recall of products. 
So you can see on this slide here that regulations are being implemented for medical devices, um, but just to note that there is a proposed delay due to the impact of COVID-19. Um, this is for the EU medical device regulation, which unique de device identification is a part of. Um, the falsified medicines directive is here and the end and the use and learn period ended on the 31st of January this year. Um, so these all require the unique identification of products using a product code and other traceability information. And just to note that industry are choosing to work with GS1 to meet these requirements and are using the GTIN and GS1 barcodes. Um, so now I will hand back to Siobhan, who will talk a bit more about why use the GTIN. Thank you, Amanda. And, um, and now I'll just cover why use a GTIN. So again, um, some of what we're sharing with you are things that we're seeing um, come up regularly within our um, engagement with, with healthcare, particularly healthcare providers. Um, this example here on the next slide is an example of product code duplication across suppliers. So Amanda, I don't see the slide yet. It may, there may be just a delay, um, but I'll start talking to it anyway. So thank you. The, um, this is an example actually prepared by Medtronic um, where they took a product code. So within their own product catalog, they have uh, six digit codes, which is fairly typical of, of um, supplier codes. It can vary, of course. Um, and But the point is that these aren't unique because while they might be unique within the supplier catalog, as soon as it comes into a hospital or a healthcare provider, um, there are, for the same code can actually be different products. So you can see here, um, the same code is a heart valve, can be a, a syringe and can be a catheter system. So the, it is not unique and that presents challenges when doing any type of scanning or, or coding with or reordering even replenishment and recall within the, the healthcare provider. Um, this means that uh, the GTA now is, is becoming that globally unique identifier and because it can be linked to the existing code it is globally unique and it can also be um, encoded in the barcode on the, the the product packaging within the the next slide we have uh, an example i suppose to try and illustrate what this means in practice so Typically, a um, manufacturer has a product code and um, that then the product then ships to the distributor. Sometimes the distributor will add some letters or numbers to that code. And then when it gets into the uh, to the healthcare provider, that code can also change. So trying to do any type of recall, uh, track and trace is, is, is really challenging and often it's challenging and also paper based. And um, best practice now is where the, the GTIN can be linked to, to that code. It means that the GTIN is the same from the manufacturer right through to the, to the point of care. Um, and um, what we're seeing now is not only in Ireland, but also in other countries where um, the GTIN is now being included in tenders. So, so most recently, a uh, recent tender, national tender for medical consumables mandated GTIN for each product packaging level. And that's something we will we'll cover in, in, uh, in further webinars, in, sorry, later webinars. It's always important to understand what is driving the need for standardization in healthcare uh, and the primary driver is definitely patient safety and um, seeing many events where product recall is really challenging uh, even just having the right product in the right place having enough of the right product uh, and also ensuring that um, product hasn't expired and being able to manage that visibility that visibility in turn also ensures that you have additional operational and procurement efficiencies and as we've mentioned, we're seeing a lot of this then transforming into government regulations, re uh, regulatory requirements and specific programmes like Scan for Safety in the UK. And we're seeing now that happening in Ireland as well, where many hospitals are adopting the Scan for Safety programme um, as they start to introduce scanning within theatres and other areas. So the next slide I'll hand over to Amanda. Thanks, Siobhan. Um, so just to quickly highlight a few resources available if you would like to learn more. Uh, so on our website, you will find several case studies and implementation guides and our latest news and events. 
and we also record and publish all of our webinars for you to view at a time that suits you. And then next, if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, you can do so using this link, which I will also provide in a follow-up email. And we're also very active on social media, so our Twitter handle is at GS1 Ireland underscore health, HC, sorry. And then we also have a LinkedIn group, which you can find by searching GS1 Ireland Healthcare and request to join. And we also provide a number of advisory services, such as on-site implementation support, uh, barcode verification and training, and um, specific implementations as well. Um, so you can find out more by contacting us. Thank you, Amanda. So I suppose we're nearly uh, at the end of this today's webinar. We're trying to keep it to 15 minutes. Uh, so as uh, these are short and informative and educational, hopefully you have found it useful. Our next webinar is planned for the 22nd of April. And um, the topic is which GTIN is this? So trying to understand packaging hierarchies. Uh, this is, I think, the holy grail and trying to understand uh, units of measure and, and managing um, order quantities, etc. So that should be a very exciting webinar. Um, we also certainly would uh, would like to hear from you if you'd like any other topics to be covered. As Amanda mentioned, the webinar is recorded so you can listen back and also feel free to share with, with uh, colleagues and peers. Um, we finally just would like to uh, reference our solution provider program. As you can see here, our, our, our platinum partners, IFS, gold partners and solution partners. And we probably will be hearing from, from some of the, the subject experts in some of our future webinars as well. So without further ado, we'll go to questions and uh, certainly also feel free to get in touch afterwards if you have any further questions. Thank you. So Amanda. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a couple of questions here. So um, first of all, um, just kind of to recap, um, how do I know if the barcode I'm looking at is a GTIN? Would you like to take this one, Siobhan? Yeah, so that's a that's a very good question, and I think particularly uh, we have this we get, often get this question from from hospitals and healthcare providers that are starting to look at barcoding and. They're, I suppose, um, a bit overwhelmed with the amount of barcodes they're seeing. Um, I think, as 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 Manda outlined, looking at the AN13 or the different types of barcodes with the 13 digits or the 14 digits within the the 128 or the 2D data matrix, it's it's partly practice and getting to know and getting to learn the, the barcodes, and very quickly you start to understand what um, what barcodes are GS1 or or not. And um, we would certainly always recommend that software will be set up to to recognise and there is functionality within the barcode to identify what is a GS1 barcode if somebody needs that verification. Um, so, so part of it is, is, is practice and if you have any questions certainly do get back to us and we, we, can, we can help you. Thank you Siobhan and um, another question we have here is something that does come up a bit which is what do I do if the product has two barcodes? So would you like to yeah. take this one again? Yeah, so that that's uh, again a very good question. Sometimes it's legacy where one barcode was 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 on the product. Often it's an EAN thirteen, and then the the company decide to move to two D data matrix. Sometimes they, they, their strategy is to keep the two because some of their customers can't scan the 2D data matrix. Now that is changing as technology improves, and I think we'll start to see some of those barcodes going away. And um, sometimes also the the GS1 barcode can be can be in two. You know, in, in two barcodes, so the GTIN in one and the traceability information in the second. That is that is po possible. There's nothing wrong with it. However, definitely um, the request from hospitals and healthcare providers is that all the information is in one barcode. They only want one scan. They they don't want them to be asking nurses to to scan multiple barcodes. So certainly, recommendation for any supplier that's applying barcodes on their packaging is to try and, and keep it, everything in the one barcode. Thanks. Um, thanks, Siobhan. So we don't have any more questions, so um, we might wrap up here, Siobhan. Yeah, OK, so I think we'll just we'll close the webinar now. Thank you very much for attending uh, and please do provide any feedback if you'd like to hear on any other topics. And we look forward to uh, seeing you again on the 22nd of April. Thank you very much. Thank you all.